Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Yannick Gontier. I'm going to give you a, to talk to you today about Google Analytics and Google Console. Um, here is a little bit of background about me. I uh, created and have been developing SH404 Seth, which is a uh, uh, analytics and SEO uh, extensions for Joomla. I've been doing that for uh, since uh, 2006. Uh, and since last year, it's been going on under the name Weebler, which is the brand you're gonna see all throughout this, this talk. Um, we also do another extension, which is called Josetta, and which is a uh, translation manager for Joomla. Okay, so that's the background. I'm not going to talk about my products today. Um, <coughs> what I'm going to try to do today is um, from an really uh, an administrator and a, and a user standpoint um, find metrics uh, try to, to to find metrics and actionable data through analytics and through google console to try help your seo effort and process uh, sh 4 set has been providing some analytics features uh, from the start but very often um, basically our users don't know what to do with these figures. You've got basic data, we'll see that. I'll, I'll run through that very quickly. You've got things like that. Uh, it's probably too small to be seen, but you've got basic things like uh, page view, uh, traffic sources by traffic by sources. My users, my visitors come from Google, they come from uh, referral, which is another site sending them to me, or they come through uh, a direct call, somebody typed the address. So, okay, that's great, you can measure things. Uh, you can see you have more visitors or less visitors. What do you do with that? How do you, how do you use, uh, how do you get information about what you need to do on your site or elsewhere to increase the number? That's what I would like to talk about. Uh, here is another example from the Search for for Seth backend, where you got uh, the, the the pages that are most viewed and with some what starts to be a little bit actionable data because you've got something like average time on page. So for each page, you know how much time a user spends on that page. That might be something you can use to alter your content. Anyway, uh, <coughs> and here is another example. This is not using analytics, but we also provide some things like uh, the four forms numbers <coughs> on your site, and then you can click through and see them. Uh <coughs> you can also see the list of URLs, for instance, that were never visited. Nobody saw a specific URL on your site. Why? What, what's happening? So, but that's still very basic, and <coughs> uh, though it's easily accessible because it's inside your site backend, uh, it's too difficult to use uh, for fine-grained, what I call fine-grained uh, SEO, something more sub subtle that you need to have and do today because we are, uh, search engines have evolved a lot, and uh, um, the basic things you could do five years ago are not enough today to edge off your competition, whatever that competition is, and whether you sell products or you do other things without any business in mind, you're always in, my, in competition with other people uh, on the web. So, <coughs> why do we, I don't know you, but why do people have websites usually? Uh, to complete goals, what I, what I, the way I see it, it's to complete goals. Whether those are your goals as a website administrator, I want to sell products. I want some users to call me because I want to do something, to sell them something, do organize something. Um, but also users, visitors, they have goals. They went to your, to your site because they wanted to find a piece of information or they wanted to buy a product that fulfilled their needs. Uh, there are many possible situations. I've just uh, outlined a few here, but uh, you, administrators and your users, you, have, you want to achieve goals. So that's the basic of everything. Now, how can you complete, complete those goals, achieve those goals? Um, my me method I try to use is to break this down in three steps. Visitors must find you. They need to become aware of your existence and the fact that possibly they can fulfill their goals with you. you, can, you they can achieve their goals at your website. Second, when they became aware of your existence, you have to decide them to go 
to your site, to come to click on that link wherever they find it and come to your site. And the third step is once they are on your site, uh, well, you, you, you have to deliver. You have to give them what they wanted, what they expected, what they thought you were providing. Uh, so th this is the basic methodology. Uh, why, why do I split it this way? Because for each, <coughs> uh, each of these steps can be translated <coughs> into something real. Uh, to let people find you, your site has to be crawled by search engines efficiently, and your content has to be indexed. And we have methods to solve this problem if you find a problem there. You can work on technical errors, you can, you can work on the structure of your site, you can do on-page SEO. But you have to know there's a problem there, or you can improve. <coughs> Second, uh, decide them on, after finding your existence, if you want them to come to your site, then you have to rank for queries. For a given uh, query, keywords, or keywords set, uh, <coughs> you have to be amongst the best one. And at the same time, you have to stand out in the results. So, uh, SERP is search engine result page, so that's where the results are shown. So you have to stand out. You have to be there uh, near the top, but you have to stand out as well. And we have tools. There are things you can do if you have a problem there. Uh, and then the third step, completing those goals on your website, there are also things you can do. Some of them are just related to your products. If your product is bad, eventually you're not going to sell much if you're trying to sell. If your documentation is bad, you're not going to help much pe many people. So, but there are still things you can do. <laughs> now, <coughs> for each of these three steps, I'm going to go through those uh, three categories. And you'll see a pattern there. Uh, in each case, in each situation, we're going to identify an issue uh, or a potential gain. Maybe you don't have an issue, but there's something you can do, you can do better. Then we're going to try to change something, or at least I'm going to tell, tell you, uh, you, you, you might want to look at that. And then, uh, as everybody should be doing already, you, we're going to measure the results. And then we just uh, feed that back and, and go back to the first step and reprocess. And you, you'll be just doing that all the time, which is tiring, which is, which is something that's required to have any kind of success in SEO uh, today, or even running the website properly. So now, uh, these three steps I outlined, outlined also find uh, really appropriated tools in, in the Google um, Analytics and, and, and uh, uh, console that you have available to you. It's available for free, I'm sure you're all aware of that. Um, though you can pay for it. There's a little drawback about the free version of analytics. It's basically that uh, pretty much any interesting data has only a 90, day, uh, 90 days retention period. So things that are really interesting, after 90 days, they are wiped out. There are things you can do to save them, but um, the bulk of it is going to disappear for you. So you have to, you know, don't, less, uh, don't let too much time pass. It's, it's good to know that. And you don't want to pay for the real analytics because it's uh, really a bundle, so you don't want to do that. So getting crawl index, we are going to look at uh, two specific sections of uh, the search console, crawl and Google index. Uh, search console to rank, to have your rank and, and stand out. You've got search traffic and search appearance, how your site or how your search results look into the search results. And then complete, complete goals, that's where we're going to use Google Analytics. Uh, first step, uh, getting crawled and getting indexed. That's a major point, and people often don't realize how, in, how important it is. Um, <coughs> for that, you're going to use the search console I got, and the crawl section of the, of the search console. I got a, a bigger screenshot later. Uh, the search console and the crawl section will tell you every crawl related errors. Google came to your site, they tried to explore your site, get the content, and there was an error. Somehow they couldn't get it through. So that's something you absolutely want to fix most of the time. Uh, another thing maybe uh, users are not so <coughs> aware of is that <coughs> one very limiting factors of your SEO and, and is the crawling rate. Uh, search engines are not going to come back so often 
to crawl your new pages or the updates you can make to your website. They have a crawl budget, and that crawl budget, the, the, the how, how often they're going to uh, check your site for content, depends a lot on many things, on, on the size of, the si of your site, how, how well you rank already, uh, uh, many things. Uh, this is a real-life example over 90 days. You can see that, for instance, at most, <coughs> uh, the highest number, they, uh, the, ser the, the search engine boats came and crawled 255 pages on a day. Uh, some days, they didn't come at all. They didn't crawl any page at all. And on average, 13 pages, which is really low, as you can, <coughs> as you can imagine. Uh, and it's even lower than that because this was right after the beginning. So those this average, you know, if we take, uh, uh, this is from February 2016, so if we, uh, th that's, uh, yeah, this, the site was launched right here, so, but later on, it's going to be more like a few pages a day, so don't expect immediate results, and there are things you can do to speed things up, but uh, it takes time, they don't come back so often. Now, <coughs> um, yeah, that's us so, uh, once your site has been crawled, I thought I had a slide. Yeah, okay. Once your site has been crawled, <coughs> it has to be indexed. That is, Google has fetched some content from your site. They are going to work on it, index it, find what it's all about, whether it's quality, whether it's high quality content, what it is relevant to, which queries should match it. That's, that's indexing. Uh, You've got two things you can do there. Uh, and two tools in the Google index section of the search console. You can use a tool called fetched as Google, which will show, <coughs> you, you, you feed it with a URL from your site, and it's, it's going to show you what Google sees on that page. Uh, there are two things that are really useful with that. Uh, you can check whether your page renders correctly, and they see exactly what you mean. Uh, and also, it's, it's a nice tool, it's pretty much the only way to speed up things. That is, uh, tell them, oh, I have a new page that's ready for uh, uh, crawling and indexing. Go, please, uh, put it in the index in replacement maybe with the, for, the, for the previous one. The other tools uh, is the sitemap. Uh, so sitemap is a little thing I dislike. Uh, many people use sitemaps without knowing what they are for, and it's... Uh, for most sites, actually, a sitemap is of absolutely no use. It, it doesn't do anything. <coughs> uh, a sitemap is a list of URLs or of pages on your site that Google may, they m absolutely may use it to uh, index better your site. <coughs> so that doesn't mean really anything. It's, it, it just means they can use it or they can, uh, they can uh, not use it. Uh, they can do basically whatever you want. So. There are some benefits to using sitemaps, and I'm going to show you one matrix, one way of using it that I, that I kind of like. But basically, the, uh, what you have to take out of that is basically, if you do a sitemap, and you just store all, or you just list all the, U, the pages on your site in the sitemap, it's no use. Uh, a sitemap can be used to provide Google with a list of uh, pages that are not easily found on your site. For instance, uh, pages that you still want to rank, but are not uh, linked from anywhere on your site. There's no direct link, no way to get there. Uh, that's a theoretical situation because if you want this URL to rank, then you have to have links to it. So it's rather theoretical, but that's, that's one way of uh, doing it. And another way of using a sitemap is to list their pages that you saw Google never came or came, came, comes rarely to crawl them, see them but you, you want to rank for them, you think they are good, but they don't come and they, you don't rank, and they don't come often, and don't crawl them, don't index them. So you might want to list those bad URLs, those URLs that are not used by the search engines, and tell them, okay, it's a hint, please, could you come and see those? That's, that's a, a, an interesting use for the sitemaps. Okay, so the way, <coughs> Uh, it's, it's sort of listed here, but the way I use it, I actually list here in the sitemap the important pages, the, the subset of, my, of the pages on, on my site, which I want to rank for, the ones that are important. So don't put your contact, contact page here, that's not used, it's just wasting budget, crawl budget. Okay, 
Um, here is a screenshot of the uh, uh, Fetch as Google uh, feature that I mentioned. We are in Search Console, Fetch as Google. It's in the crawl section. You type, it, type in a, a URL. You click on Fetch or Fetch and Render. Fetch and Render is a bit slower, but it's nice because it will show you a screenshot of your page. Uh, you can select whether you want to see the desktop version or the mobile version, and it will show you exactly what they render. Uh, there is probably most of you are aware of, but years ago, if you were to use this fetch as Google, uh, peop most people were under the, the impression that a search engine is only uh, understanding text, that they would just grab the text in inside your content and index that, try to see the keywords there. That's not how it works. <coughs> uh, today, and for already a few, uh, quite some time, uh, search engines, they just render everything. So they've got a real full screenshot, they will execute the JavaScript, they will um, um, see all the images, they will see where the, <coughs> where the content goes, uh, whether it's uh, under the, whether it's you have too many ads, for instance, typical thing, you have, you, have, you have ads at the top of your page, that's bad, it's gonna be down for you. So they, they'll, re, they'll be rendering everything. Don't expect to hide. And that's where you can see here, fetch and render whether this goes or not. When you've done that and you're happy, you click Submit to Index, and they may, again, they may index, again, this page. It's generally considered it will be faster uh, to, uh, the, 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 the crawling and indexing will go faster. Okay, I have to go much faster as well. <laughs> anyway, so the first crawling metrics that I want to propose to you is this. If you go to sitemaps, and remember, I only put in my sitemap the good URLs, the pages I want. You can go to sitemaps, and you're going to see the web pages, the submitted, and actually indexed. So we've got two numbers here. And if you go to the Search Console index status, I'm going to see the total number of URLs indexed for this site. And with that, you can take two numbers. If you take the number of URLs, the good ones, in your sitemap, and you divide <coughs> over um, the number of URLs uh, in, oh, in sorry, index versus sitemap, you can see here that 96% of my good URLs are actually indexed. That's a pretty good result. Uh, and then if you look at the good URLs over the total number of URLs, you can see that I have only 8, 15% of what I call useless URLs. So I'm pretty, on that side, I'm pretty focused all the good URLs that have the one that I, I think have content and I listed in my sitemap, I have, I, have numbers, I have numbers here to show that uh, Google have indexed, has indexed all of them, pretty much all of them, and he has, he has indexed, they have indexed nothing else than that, which is pretty good because it's uh, all the ranking signals are going to focus on my good URLs. What happens if you don't have <coughs> uh, enough of the good pages? You can work, you can check whether you blocked some pages with your robots.txt file. Uh, you can check whether you have no index tags in your pages. Uh, and again, you can check whether those pages, maybe they're not linked anywhere, so <coughs> they, they didn't consider them a, a good pages. What happens if you have too much useless pages? You have more, it's your, you're splitting your um, ranking signals. Then you can no index more. You can put decide that on your, again, your contact page or some useless pages, you're gonna put no index. Maybe if you have a store uh, with the category pages and some product pages, you can no index the category page because the category page is competing with your product pages. So just no index that. That's a, not a general rule. You have to think about it, but it's a good rule. Uh, if you have a blog, no index the blog. Just index the the, the actual uh, articles, the, 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 the blog posts, but no index the what, what's, uh, what's called the blog category page in Joomla. No index follow, of course. You want uh, engines to go through the links, but just rank for the main pages. So here are things you can uh, action based on the numbers we have seen before. These are indexing metrics. Now your site is indexed, it's well crawled, it's indexed. <coughs> How do we rank better? What can we do? Uh, the first thing I propose is to, is to find, uh, is to spend time on pages that are worth it. That is pages that are underperforming. If your pages, if you have pages that works well and brings you lots of traffic, 
maybe it's not worth uh, spending much time on it. Then you fix them and then you repeat. How do you find uh, underperforming uh, pages? Here's the method. You go to the search console, search analytics. <coughs> there, it's really useful. You got plenty of data, so much data, there's so, so just so much data there. Uh, here is our set it up. I just clicked, uh, I just checked to display the clicks, the impressions, which is the number of time my URL that uh, I have been displayed in the, any kind of query on, on Google and the click through rate. Then you click on pages and there you're gonna see, uh, and I personally, I it's not there, but I usually sort by impressions. So I'm gonna see the pages on my site <coughs> that have been displayed the most to users. And then you can look at the click through rate. This is the number of people who actually clicked on the link uh, and went to my site after seeing my results in Google search results. So if you've got, uh, there's no bad value actually, actually here, but if you see one that's rather low uh, compared to the others, then you want, to, you want to dig into that one. So you click on that URL, and now we, have, uh, we are only looking at that particular page I selected. And now you look at the queries. You click that button here, and it will show you the, the queries that users uh, typed search for to, to get to your page. And, and then again, uh, I sort by impressions. And what I can see is that I can see there the, uh, the queries for which my page was most displayed. And, and then again, the click-through rate. So you can see here there's a huge problem for that query, Joomla SEO. I've got the most impressions for that period of time, uh, more than 8,000, but only 0.06% of visitors actually clicked there. So obviously there's a big gain possible. The reason is, there are many reasons, but it's, it's, about, it's about URL, so you might want to look at that. Same thing here for SEO analytics. Uh, though in that case, I'm not surprised because SEO analytics mean, uh, means any kind of, it's not related to Joomla, so I don't stand a chance to rank on that. So probably it's not worth spending much time on that. But Joomla SEO, yeah, I would like to rank on that. So <coughs> from that information, what can I do? Uh, I know I have now identified a page, which is here, which is my product landing page, which is badly performing for Joomla SEO. And I want uh, Google thinks <coughs> that this page actually deserves to rank for Joomla SEO because it, shows it, it showed it a lot to people. It, sh it showed it to in, in the results, but nobody clicks. But Google still think that it's a good page for that query. So I want to build on that. And what can I do? I need to help <coughs> people or to entice people to click on that link <coughs> when they see it. So you're going to use <coughs> what's called traditional SEO work. You're going to work, in that case, probably on the meta uh, description because the page is there in the result, but nobody clicks on it. So maybe I can do a better description. Somebody that will, uh, uh, maybe I, I don't remember if I, probably I don't have even the, the word Joomla SEO in the description. So maybe I want to add that. Maybe I want to work more <coughs> on the structure of that page, on the copywriting, maybe put more SEO words, keywords there, a little bit in, in strategic places. I don't want to damage the page either. But anyway, uh, for that kind of problem, low performing page, no click through, I'm gonna work on the meta description. <coughs> and then go back to fetch as Google, uh, make, make them fetch the page, submit to index. And then, okay, I didn't put it there, but uh, this should fit something out. And I'm gonna wait. Well, I can look at other pages, but I'm gonna wait for this page maybe a few weeks at least and see if what I did uh, was correct. And to know if, if what I did was useful, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, that is go back to this page here and see if two weeks from now, uh, this number has increased. If so, probably I did a good job. Of course, at the same time, uh, you probably want to monitor things for, and I don't know, another keyword, uh, Ceph URLs probably, which I'm probably pretty good for. And, and you don't want, because you don't want to degrade other things. <coughs> so it's always that. You, you do something, you measure the results, and uh, you, do, <coughs> you do something, you measure the results, and you come back to the initial step. Yeah. There we go. So now, 
we are going to the last step, uh, which is we have managed to bring people to our website for a page, and we want to help them. Uh, or we, we want to be sure as many as possible of them are going to find what they were looking for. Uh, that's where uh, <coughs> and looking for means the, what they search for, uh, what they expect. Maybe they are looking in. Maybe they want to buy a product, but maybe they just want some documentation. If you're a non-governmental uh, association, you want to you have a, a very specific piece of information on whatever legal matter. So it's not about selling products. <coughs> We're going to use Google Analytics for that. Uh, same process. You measure, you identify issues, you fix, and you repeat. So how do we use Google Analytics? Uh, a little things I, I like to, to do is, uh, I assume again that most of you are familiar with that page. Uh, that's the admin page of Google Analytics when you have a given property. Uh, I al always create two views. There's the, what I call the raw data view. It's, it's when you, you have, it's the default view. You have no, nothing, no, not change any parameters. And here the raw data is exactly as Google uh, fetches it. And then I create <coughs> a filtered view where in the settings for that view, I will click this, both filtering. And when you do that, Google will <coughs> remove all the known search engines bots, though the list is kind of funny, uh, like it hasn't been updated in 10 years, but they will remove search engine bots, and they will remove known bots, known spam bots that will go to come to your site and, and uh, at least waste your bandwidth. So anyway, uh, this <coughs> will do things like that. On that particular test site, uh, the filtered view for a given period, uh, the raw data, if you don't look at things without re removing the boats, you got uh, 2,300 visitors. And actual visitors, that's 1,400. So we're not half, but it's, it's really, there's really a huge difference. So all the work I'm gonna do later on, I'm gonna do it on the filtered view because there are better chances that uh, we are seeing data about real people, not, not, not bots. Yes? No, it's not. If Googles are aware that this whole spam issue... Sorry? Uh, if Googles are aware of the whole problem with the spam box visiting the site all the time, uh, to your knowledge, do you know what, what is the point in them showing it? Why don't they just filter that raw data for you from, from the start? I assume you'd have to ask them. Uh, yeah, my, I, I really like that they don't hide them systematically because first they do mistakes. They do a lot of mistakes. If you look at <coughs> the list, like I said, about a list of search engines, uh, uh, the official list at least, uh, there are sites that, like there's one in France, voila.fr, which is not even a search engine anymore. It used to be many years back. So. Uh, I just don't trust them. That's why I actually keep both. So you can always go back to the real list and sometimes uh, compare things a little bit to see if there are really a uh, huge difference. And so it, I just don't trust them. Just because they said that, don't trust them. But I think it's a good basis. It makes sense. Uh, but the raw data is actually what you want to, to, to have somewhere to, to refer to. Uh, so yeah, in that case, uh, almost 40% of the visits were considered s uh, boats. It's not always spam, actually, for instance. If you know moz.com, they have crawlers. Or if you go Majestic SEO or, or com SEO companies like that, they have crawlers. They crawl your site. Uh, but they are not real visitors. They just get there to do some other work. And it's fine, but they are not spammers. You don't want to remove them. You want to be aware of them. So it makes sense to me. Can I ask a question? Printed on that on screen. Why do you think your bounce rate's gone up on the on the filtered view? How would you interpret that? Uh, the bounce rate is the worst thing, or the hardest thing to interpret. Uh -huh. So that <coughs> uh, on that case, for instance, uh, I don't know. Again, I don't know what they consider a spam bot. This particular test site is not a real site. Uh, it's a it's a test site I have, and I have a small script somewhere which just go and fetches. Uh, pages at random, so I have actually data 
in an analytics account so I can work on it. And it's actually indexed also, so it's, it's, a, it's a mix with uh, artificial data and, and so on. Uh, <coughs> I will assume here uh, that by removing some spam boats, uh, some spam boats are actually just bouncing off. That there, are, there are more boats bouncing off than the average users, which I like. You know, on, in theory, on my side, I like people to stay. So, uh, however, uh, boats can maybe just bounce off, consider bound, be bouncing more often than, uh, than actual users. Bounce, bounces rate is, is just terrible to, to analyze, analyze. It's really on a side-by-side -side basis that has to be done. Many times it's actually really good to have high bounce rate. So again, <coughs> this is how we're going to do it. Um, first, things you might want to look at. It's probably not going to change very often, but you, you certainly want to look at it at least once. It's your uh, mobile user's ratio. Sometimes it's totally not what you expect. These are real, this is real data from, my, from Weaver.com and it's pretty steady. So on our Joomla, totally Joomla oriented websites, we have like 3% mobile user. Everybody is coming to our sites on the desktop. If you think about it, it makes sense because it's people like you, I hope you go a lot to our site, <coughs> uh, who, who are not going to, who are working, so you're not going to do search or whatever on your mobile phone, so it makes sense. But you want to know that number to sort of balance your effort um, and uh, how you're gonna, going to organize your site, the amount of effort you put on responsive web designs or other techniques. Uh, so how do we use analytics? The way I really want to use analytics is by uh, setting goals. That's really how you, you're going to see what people do on your website. Goals uh, help us measure whether users actually completed what they wanted to do. We, we talked about downloading a file or creating an account or making a purchase or maybe commenting or uh, registering for a newsletter that's, that are either your goals or the goals of your users. And we can measure that. Uh, this provide, and there's another category of, of goals that we can actually measure. It's the behavior they have. How much time do they spend on my site? How much time do they spend on a given page? We can measure all that and set them as goals. Uh, <coughs> this is an example. You do that uh, in the view. You've got a goals uh, menu. It's really simple. You give them an uh, a, a URL. So every time, that's the simplest version. Uh, every time somebody is going to reach the create an account layout equals complete page on the website, count one. And so that's going to be a goal. It means somebody created an account, and this is one of the goals that I have. I wanted to 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 work on. You say that. <coughs> Another example is duration. You can set up a duration. Uh, I have noticed in my stats, the global stats, that users usually stand, stay 3.30, three and a half, let's say, minutes, usually on my site per session. So I've set up a goal of four minutes, and, and I'm, I'm going to work on that. I want to work on my site, change uh, pages, change <laughs> content, so that more people stay four minutes. And this is what you get. On the overview page, when you report, you're going to see the goals. Uh, on that period, 162 people reached that page, means, mean, meaning they actually created an account. Uh, <coughs> almost 2%. That's, so it's not good or bad in itself. It's, it's something you can work on, and then you can measure, which is the whole point. Uh, <coughs> when you do that, when you start building goals into build, uh, Google Analytics, then you got those nice data. Uh, for, for my goal here, create an account, I can see the source. So I can see, for instance, that most of the people creating an account on my site are coming from this. I <coughs> don't remember what it was, but I think it was uh, the jet. Uh, so I can see, that's where I can see, for instance, that mm, some sources are better than others to reach my goal. I can either work more on these or maybe work on these other ones. Uh, I think the next slide is interesting for that. You can also see uh, whether people used a uh, social network, whether they came from uh, Facebook or Twitter, and then later created an account. So you don't, s you don't just see that they came from Twitter on your site. You see they came from Twitter, 
and they created an account. This is what you're looking for. Uh, I obviously have to work on Facebook <coughs> compared to uh, the rest of the other, you know, the, the other areas. Um, again, that, like I said before, from this information, it's, it's le less clear cut, but you, you can work on that, on those failures or potential, potential gain, and then measure again and see how those numbers evolve. It can be a bit more sophisticated. <coughs> uh, for instance, we have um, we have sign up. We have different way to create an account, and we can compare those different ways. So for the <coughs> um, uh, we can comp we can here see that we want to measure uh, how many people get to that sign up page, but from which page are they going? Are they coming? Wh what's the path? How do they come? How they end up? How do they end up on that? Uh, sign up page and finally created an account. So again, it, 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 and you got plenty of information that comes along with it, especially <coughs> uh, this intermediary page where, I, which I want to evaluate. I want to know if, it's, uh, if my design on that page is good, whether they are, uh, it's really easy to create uh, an account on that page. <coughs> then I know Google is going to, the analytics is going to tell me where are people going after that page. Mm. You know, uh, half of them just left the site. So maybe I have got a big problem here. And some came back to the product page. So maybe there's not, in, not, in, not enough information on the purchase page. And people feel the need to go back to the product page. 13%. Um, maybe I, I need to, more, to add more information on the, on, the, on the purchase page. That's the kind of thing you can, you can find here. It's extremely easy. Uh, and I'm not sure what's the feeling that you got for that, but it's, it's really extremely easy to set a goal. It's, it's, it's two clicks. Uh, <coughs> you have to cr track them over time. It's not something definitely, definitely not something that you do once and it's a process like we heard before. Uh, it's not a project, it's a process. You have, to, you have to do that all the time. Can I ask you a quick question? I noticed when you were setting up the goals, yes. you were setting up in the raw data view. Yeah, that's, to do that's the same amazing. For the filters yeah. as well. There's one people really sharp here. Yeah, absolutely. That's a total mistake. I had in the notes. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't say, it, but I set it up in the filter in the row view instead of the filter. So you should I be setting it up in the filter view. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, sorry. <coughs> okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, here is just the the basic summary where you want to go for each type of action. So, do you have any question? I'm not sure we got. Time, David. But uh, mm -hmm. one question, David. Yeah. So the first thing is uh, goals on things like page requests, because I'm going to put in the final URL and registration URL. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Say that again. It's possible to set up like a, an Ajax, uh, you know, what you make an Ajax request, like a Google one Ajax request, rather than the marketing page. Because sometimes you have the contact forms that pop up and you fill in and hit send. To be honest, I don't, uh, okay, so the question. If you got the question, the question uh, was whether um, if the final URL or the final uh, thing you want, if, the, if your thank you page basically is actually a pop-up that's triggered by Ajax, so it's not a real page with a real URL, whether you can actually measure that as well or set it up as a goal. Uh, to be honest, <coughs> from the basic interface, I'm not sure, I'm not enough into that, so I don't think so. The way I, but I'm a programmer, so it's different. The way I, I would do it would be to add some JavaScript <coughs> in your uh, uh, extension or whatever code is doing that. That's just send an event to, to Google, and that event then you can track in, and put in your process. So it's always possible because it's really easy to send data to analytics with simple JavaScript. Yes? I just add to that, you, can, you can't access that code for any reason. You can use jQuery or JavaScript to then to actually add the on-click event yeah. to that ID. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, there are there are so many, so much there's so much so much information you can you can track on that. I didn't when I didn't go into the details of the all the options of the tracking code, for example. But you've got things like enhanced uh, link analysis or link analytics, I don't know, where 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 they can track each link on the page for you. you. It can be really detailed and you can really draw, uh, drown into this number. What I try to do here is more, uh, <coughs> well, if you just count 
the page views on your site, you don't have enough information uh, to do anything, really. Aside from understand that, oh, to, um, since yesterday we lost half of our, tra of our traffic, so there's something being happening. <coughs> and then you can go into that sort of details, which is really, you know, it's really detailed. So what I've tried to do here is provide some sort of in-between, something that you can easily set. You don't have to spend the whole day working on that, but you can easily find some information that will give you insight about on how, how to change, what you want to change, and where to. So it's really structured so that pretty much it can be put uh, in a software, actually, which I plan on doing something. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you.